Okay, so I just wanted to make a short little video on how to set up the stepper driver um, and how to configure, it, configure that. And so what we have right now and um, the ingredients that you're going to need to do this, this is the cable that comes with the stepper driver. And it's got an RJ11 connector, a phone type connector at one end and a DB9 at the other end. Now we have a little DB9 adapter to USB so we can get into the computer. Um, and the RJ11 will plug into directly into our stepper amp. Now right right now we're still plugged into the PLC and this is a special cable that you need for the PLC and you have to make sure that you're using that. Uh, but before we got get started with configuring or configuring the thing I wanted to show you there's a bit here and it's bit 8 and this is the expansion module 2 so we call that bit 208 and right now that bit is on and that bit is a bit that you want to configure when you're configuring the stepper amp and that will tell you when the motor is actually moving so right now it's on when it's not moving and I'll turn it on here and it goes out when I stop it, it goes back on and I can go the other direction it's moving now it's stopped. So we can use that to, um, if we're using the single sensor and we're moving at a certain number of steps to know when it actually has completed those steps and that bit goes high again. And actually even if you're not using it, and we think it's a good idea to program it anyway, it doesn't do any harm and you can do some useful uh, things with it. We have one challenge where you're supposed to uh, figure out what the default velocity of the uh, linear actuator is and you can use that timer to uh, kind of time out how long it takes to uh, perform a certain number of steps and then you can figure out what the velocity is. So uh, we'll show you how to uh, program the, um, the stepper driver straight away and uh, it's really simple. So we'll get to that. Okay so this is our software and it's called SureStep Pro and you can get this from Automation Direct and uh, this is how you configure the uh, driver. Now when it comes in it says error on COM1. It's in valid port. We'll try COM2. Uh, it's not going to be COM2 either. So we're going to take a look at this with our device manager. That'll get you into the program. I'm going to go into here and take a look at my device manager. And I've got to figure out what port my little adapter is on. So it's going to be one of our serial ports. And right here is my USB to serial thing. It's on COM3. And I'm just going to check it for properties. It says it's working properly. Um, I'm not sure why, but this software for loading this, I'm going to say the software is not the most robust. You have problems with it, or I've had problems with it all the time. But the software itself is really easy. There's four little blocks here, and that's all the four steps that you have to do. First is to pick the drive. We have a 85 or 4850. So we click on that, that step is done. For motion on I.O., we've got to use the serial command language. And that's all we have to do. Now, here, we leave all these correct, but this one says, choose a function for the output. And our output is what we're looking at in that bit 208. So we want that, again, what we had was, we had the light was on when it was not moving. And what the circuit looks like really quick is over here, it's just a little output transistor. And when we have a high when it's not moving, that means that this is turned on. So, and that signal is our motor stop signal. So what that means is it, that circuit is closed, that transistor is closed or turned on when we're not moving. Now our options here are only when it's moving, so Closed when it's not moving is the same as open when it is moving. So we're going to click on that. We want to make sure that we do that for the output. And we say OK. Now you should do that and you should program that even if you intend to use the four sensor output. Um, there is no good reason not to program it. It won't make a difference if you don't use it. So that's fine and we're good there. Now for our motor, our motor is a size 23 motor and we just put it on the 23050. And we leave everything as is. Uh, for this, if we say OK, it'll say, well, it'll come back and that's fine. Now all we have to do is upload to the drive. We said we were on COM3. So we'll put it on COM3 and we'll download to the device. If it works, uh, this is a progress bar right here where I have the little cursor thing. 
and it'll flash really quickly if it downloads to the device. And right now it says, well, it says we haven't set the load inertia. Um, so we'll go back here and we'll go back and we'll just change it to instead of one, we'll put it like 1.4 and that'll be fine. You know, it's not a big deal because uh, we're just moving a cup in the carriage. Uh, I suppose if you have significant loads, you might want to um, take a look at that, but we've decided that it really doesn't make a difference for what we're doing. So now we're going to download to our drive. And here is where we have problems, and I think it's somewhere in the software. It's going to come back and say, um, you know, it doesn't seem like the port is ready or it's not configured. And what we have to do is we have to turn the drive off. We have to power down and then power back up, and that m usually fixes the problem. So I'm just going to try it again and see if it wants to communicate at all. Um, and now I'll turn it off, wait a few seconds, turn it back on, and it says it's not responding. Uh, there it did flash, so now we're okay, and now we should be ready to go.